Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for a slightly different setup, which is entirely intentional because today I wanted to recommend you books based on predominantly TikTok fashion aesthetics. If you've been following me online the past sort of month or two, you may know that I've got super into TikTok. Yes, I'm at least a year behind everybody else, but I've fallen down the rabbit hole and love both making content on there and watching content on there. It has also definitely inspired me a little bit with the creativity in terms of my content on other platforms and not only do I love books but I also love clothes and style and I'm really enjoying seeing all of the different ways that people express themselves through fashion on TikTok and thought it might be fun to recommend to you books based on those aesthetics so a lot of them you're probably going to recognise I picked some of my favourites and some of the more popular ones um, to share with you and not only did I want to share a book with each recommendation I thought it'd be cute if I changed my outfit into something that I felt was in keeping with that aesthetic. Obviously I haven't bought new clothes especially for this video so it's based on my own wardrobe, it might not be exactly perfect, it will be my take on the look but I thought that might be a fun way to just sort of shake things up and make this video a bit of two in one. So first up I wanted to zone in on what you might be able to tell from my current outfit is the soft girl aesthetic. So from what I understand this one is all about cutesiness. It is all about sort of hyper femininity uh, but on that sort of like cute, fun side of things. There's lots of pastel colours and cute hairstyles like little buns and pigtails which I haven't done here because I'm just going to leave my hair since I'm changing my outfit so much for this video already but I did try and sort of encompass that in my outfit and the book I wanted to recommend for this it just felt perfect in so many ways because it's Moonstruck Volume 1. So this one's actually a comic book, it's the only comic book on this list and there's currently three volumes out each of which include four issues so we're 12 issues strong at this point and there is multiple reasons like I mentioned I wanted to recommend this one. One of which is of course the aesthetic of the actual comic book. The actual artwork uses the most gorgeous range of pastel shades and it just screams soft girl to me. Like I feel as though half the characters in this comic book could very much come under the soft girl aesthetic. But one of the things I've also really enjoyed about um, TikTok and different aesthetics is seeing the way that the queer community puts their own spin and stamp on them and I feel like this comic book perfectly encompasses the queer soft girl aesthetic, <laughs> we will call it. It's about a group of friends that go to college in this town that feels a lot like um, the typical sort of small US towns that you see on the television. For me, as somebody from the UK, it, it feels like that. However, there's one major difference in that most of the characters in these comic books, if not all of the main characters, are magical creatures. So magical creatures and humans coexist in this world. It's really not commented on. It's not a big deal. There is not any explanation needed. It is just our world, but as if half of us if not more were magical and you get to see centaurs and werewolves and seers and many other creatures crammed in there but all of whom are just living these lives very much like ordinary college or university students so they're meeting up in coffee shops, they're going to parties, they're writing their novels, they're going on dates for the first time and it is so cute, like it is just so cute, warm and fuzzy and that feels exactly what the soft girl aesthetic is also about. Soft and cute and that's exactly what Moonstruck is and I would highly recommend the entire collection. So next up we have my take on the cottagecore aesthetic which is pretty self-explanatory from the name. It's about cottages, it's quite earthy. Again it feels quite cute, um, it's not necessarily the most like practical farming outfit but it takes sort of inspiration from nature and being outside and living um, that sort of like allotment life if that makes sense. So I had to go for this recommendation for Sunset Song by Lewis Grassic Gibbon. This is one of my favourite classics, my favourite pieces of Scottish literature and it just screams cottagecore to me. Particularly if you're having some sort of cottagecore identity crisis at the moment and undecided about whether you want to um, live off the land or go work in the city because that's basically our protagonist's dilemma. This is about Chris Guthrie who is a young woman growing up in Scotland in the first half of the 20th century um, through the World War 
uh, I think just the first one, <laughs> and um, about her sort of coming of age story, growing up as a farmer's daughter, but also being drawn to living in the city and potentially going to study in Edinburgh, away from her background and her home and the life that she's always known. We follow her first romances, her first losses, and it is such a stunning novel. It is such an incredible example of Scots literature that uses both the English language and the Scots language. And I know I also quite often get recommendations for Scottish literature requests, and this is always my first one. Like, if you haven't read any Scottish literature yet, or if you just haven't read this book, go read this before you read anything else, because it's absolutely stunning and I think it really stands the test of time. So next up we have a lot of people's favourite which is Dark Academia and this one is kind of ideal for a video like this because not only is Dark Academia a fashion aesthetic it's also a genre for literature and rather than recommending the secret history once again <laughs> I thought I'd recommend a book I read more recently which was Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. So this is very much a dark academia novel that almost verges on light horror or just like straight horror. It's not full of jump scares but it is very creepy, it's very unsettling and there's some very disturbing stuff going on at this university. We follow a young woman who has recently finished high school and has a darker past. We don't know exactly what's gone on in her past but something quite tragic, potentially quite terrible has happened that has made her feel the need to flee from her previous life and in order to do that she decides to take a place at the elite mysterious Catherine House University. So Catherine House University has a reputation for you know churning out great minds and people who go on to be very successful but also potentially being a part of some slightly strange now banned experiments and there is always the question hanging in the air of whether these experiments are still going on. So we follow Follow our protagonist as she goes through her three years at this college or university in the US, makes new friends, experiences a lot of emotional turmoil stemming from her past, as well as uncover the secrets of Catherine House. And it's very atmospheric and very dark, like I already mentioned. So very much feels in keeping with the dark academia aesthetic. Like I feel as though this book was written whilst the author was sitting dressed in full dark academia regalia in a room full of like leather bound tomes and dark oak furniture. <laughs> Next up we have one of my favourites which is Fairy Core. This one's a little bit more niche but as a fantasy lover it's no surprise that I ended up on Fairy Core TikTok and I definitely think this is a more wearable version of the aesthetic. I would really love to pair this with a corset over top that I feel like would really cinch the look together and make it ultimate fairy core but the idea of this one is really in essence that you would be wandering through the forest readily dressed to be kidnapped by a fairy prince or princess um, I think is what fairy core is going for and for that reason of course I have to recommend a fae fantasy novel however not one where the protagonist is kidnapped instead one where the protagonist goes on a adventure of her own in order to save her people and that is Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. So this is one where like I mentioned the protagonist wants to save her people. She's a healer and she wants to cure this plague which is overcoming the human realm and the only way to do this is to strike a bargain with the Fae and travel to this magical fairy island that only appears once every like blue moon. I can't remember the exact number of years but every now and then you can travel through the mist and journey to this island and on this island are the Fae who have been banished from the Seelie realm. So the Fae court have banished them including one of their princes and it's on this island that she meets that prince. There's some romance, she falls in love, she may potentially find some answers to saving her people and this one just screams fairy core to me. It has the fae vibe, it has the romance vibe and it has that strong female protagonist in the centre so I absolutely adore it and would highly recommend it. We then have an aesthetic which is probably the one I struggled with the most to pull <laughs> from my wardrobe. It is definitely not my style but I'm going for Visco Girl. I'm not sure I quite landed there. I may be more in like lumbercore or whatever that's called but I'm trying on my hardest to go for that quite casual, a little bit beachy summer, get your iced latte, drink it by the beach, chill vibe that I feel Visco encompasses so 
here we have it. I do, however, have a much more solid book recommendation than outfit, and that is Cruel Summer by Juno Dawson. This is a YA but older end of the YA spectrum mystery thriller novel. It's about a group of characters who have left high school. They are in their college years as opposed to their high school years. But when they were still high school students, something terrible happened. One of their friend group killed herself, although under suspicious circumstances. And they've now all congregated together after some time apart to go for a holiday in this like summer villa with a pool and get to know one another after not having seen each other for a while and after this horrible thing happened maybe it's going to be a bit of a catharsis but of course it's a little bit more deadly and dangerous than that when one of them ends up dead. Uh, it is a thriller like I mentioned and it's one of those sort of classic closed group mystery novels where it has to be one of your group of friends, they all have their own story, they all have their own motivations and you get to hear a little bit from each of their perspectives until you discover who is in fact the murderer and who may also have played a role in their previous friend's death as well. It's very compelling and gets pretty dramatic towards the end. It is definitely one where the stakes are high <laughs> and not only is it called Cruel Summer and it has those beachy vibes in the setting but I also just always feel as though thrillers are those summer reads for me. I don't know if it's like that kind of quick page turning turner nature but I tend to pick up a lot of thrillers in the summer as beach reads although I'm not going to the beach but yeah there we go. <laughs> Last but not least we have Y2K aka the years 2000 to 2010 which were in fact my teen years as a 29 year old that was when I was in high school when I was reading YA as it was first coming out and when I was wearing at some points clothes very similar to this not in my very strong emo phase but there was definitely some of this going on at certain points <laughs> and for that reason I had to recommend to you a book that not only has like Y2K vibes in terms of the characters and what they get up to but that was also published in the Y2K decade and that I read in the Y2K decade which had to be Book of Shadows book one in the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan. So this is a sort of early example of YA I feel. It was definitely one of the first YA books I read and I think the 2000s are when YA became more of a defined genre in itself. It's about a teenage girl named Morgan living in North America who becomes involved in Wicca when a new boy that is Wiccan moves to her school and she and some of her other classmates end up forming their first coven but more than just the sort of transition to a new religion for her there also appears to be some secrets from her past that link her back to the Wiccan faith historically and familially and it's really really interesting to see her go on this journey of both teen angst and new romances but also like darker family secrets and magic and learning the craft and a new religion and it's very respectful in terms of a book and a series of Wicca as a religion and as a craft and not just like a fantasy element to spice up the story. It very much treats Wicca as a craft and it's really really enjoyable. I absolutely adored this series as a teenager. Each book is pretty short. I think they're actually now published in bind up volumes because the originals were so short and it's one that I reread a few years ago as an adult and still really enjoyed. It does very much have Y2K vibes. It's not as modern as a lot of other YA novels but it still has a lot to offer so I think I'm comfortable recommending it to a new generation. <laughs> and that brings me to the end of this video recommending six books based on six outfits that were inspired by six different TikTok aesthetics. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and there was something for everyone given that it's a little bit of a mashup of both books and YouTube video genres. So thank you for watching and allowing me to experiment. I'd love to hear your recommendations for any of the TikTok aesthetics or themes I have talked about in this video, but until next time, happy reading and I'll see you again soon. Bye everyone.